If you're working with pipe, whether it's for pie cuts or notching roll cages to chassis, this video will show you how in a few minutes in a CAD program can save hours of fabrication. Instead of guessing, we'll design, assemble and check the fitment in the Libre Atom 3D before sending it off for laser cutting. This is part 3 of a CAD designed rocket stove series, but you can jump in from here. If you want the full rundown on Atom 3D and its benefits, check out the first video. I have included timestamps for tube notching and the assembly so you can jump to the sections that you need. Create a new part, select the ZX plane to activate the sketch and keyboard shortcut C, draw the inner and outer diameter, press D to dimension the pipe's inside diameter to 108.2mm or 4 quarter inches and the OD to 114.3mm or 4 half inches. Exit the sketch and let's extrude it to 381mm or 15 inches. I then orientate to the top face of the burn tube to add some slots for the flat bar to sit in if you're cooking. With the face selected I project the sketch and select the face. I will use the reference line to locate the slot. Now with the line set at 45 degrees we can select the line tool to draw a rectangle close to where we need it. I will tidy this up with constraints. With extrude cuts you don't have to have the cut sketch be exactly on the model as long as the dimensions you want is exact. For this that's quarter inch or 6.35 mil. I'll throw another dimension off the origin to fully define the sketch. Now that's grey we can use the circular pattern tool, add three more instances. The origin is our centre and click OK. To cut the slot I extrude I use the extrude cut tool and I will set the depth to 12.7mm or half an inch. Selecting the front view from the toolbar, we will now cope the pipe so it fits around the base tube's outside diameter. Left click on the XY plane, then right click to bring up the menu to select Activate Sketch. You could extrude the full outer diameter of the pipe, but due to the pipe's wall thickness and the way the tube laser cutter works, you do a lot of extra trimming to make it fit over the base tube. To remove the wall thickness using the L or line tool, I draw a horizontal line and that horizontal constraint is applied automatically. As I move to the right, a red dotted line indicates that the cursor remains at the same height. Once the lines are drawn, the equal and horizontal constraints mean they are identical length. To eliminate an extra dimension, I apply a collinear constraint. So when one line moves, the other line will follow around the arc of the circle while remaining parallel to the x-axis. I then draw a line upward for easier dimensioning and set its length to 0.12 inches or 3.05 millimeters. To position the lines, I dimension from the pipe's center to the outer node at 57.15 millimeters or two and a quarter inches. Atom 3D would have dimensioned this more effectively if the lines are being placed closer to their final position. With the line snapping into place, I trim the bottom off the circle. I close off the sketch with random lines since the critical feature is already constrained. I use the extrude cut to complete the feature. I set the cut type to through all. For better organization, the extrude cut function can be named directly in the info box, avoiding needing to rename it in the design explorer. For the next step, I need to add an axis at 88.9 millimeters or three and a half inches. Once the axis is added, I'll select the new axis and the XY plane and then use the insert plane tool to create a pivot at a 45 degree angle. Now I activate the sketch on a 45 degree plane and use the circular tool to draw a circle with an outside diameter of 114.3mm. After exiting the sketch, I extrude it to 200mm and name the feature 45 cut. When laser cutting pipes, the software will ask whether to use the inside diameter or outside as the cutting path. In this case, I used the OD, so the result of the extrude cut on the inside diameter didn't matter. As I zoom into the pipe, you can see that the extrude cut has matched up with the pipe's internal diameter. Next, I'll create a 45 degree tube using the same dimensions and the length will be 254mm or 10 inches. Before extruding the feed tube handle slots, I'll select the face and maintain association and select reference figures to maintain association. To 
demonstrate how to speed up drawing, I'll use the mirror tool. I'll draw a simple rectangle and the slot width is 6.3 mil or quarter inch and the inside edge is 4.762 millimeters or 3 sixteenths off the x-axis. Now I'll select all of the lines for the mirror operation and the mirror axis will be Z. Select OK and forget to find the sketch and exit the sketch. I use the extrude cut tool to a depth of 12.7 millimeters or half an inch. To do a 45 cut on the pipe we need to add another plane. I'll select the X axis and the XY plane. In the dialog box set the angle to 45 degrees. It was important to check that the plane was facing in the correct direction for the handle notches. Once that's done I'll activate the sketch at the origin point and I'll draw another circle for the outside diameter of the pipe. After exiting the sketch I'll go to the extrude cut and select through all in the to depth option and I'll name the cut burn tube cut. I'll press OK and then orientate to the side view to ensure everything looks correct. Next I'll go to the material library, scroll down to steel and select 304 stainless and I'll save the part as feed tube. When you first open the assembly environment it automatically prompts you to insert a component. The first part you should insert should always be placed in the origin. This keeps everything aligned as we add more parts. To add multiple parts you can keep clicking but in this case I only need one so I'll press Control c to undo it. I'll select the base tube in the Design Explorer and anchor it. Anchoring locks it in place so it won't move when you start adding or constraining other parts. Now we'll move to inserting the burn tube. With the burn tube added you'll notice that I can click and drag it freely around the workspace. However for precise placement I'll use the component placement tool which provides a free drag triad. This tool allows you to rotate the part along the X, Y and Z axes or move the part along them. With the burn tube roughly positioned, we'll use the constraints to lock it in place accurately. The constraint tool in the Libre Atom is used to precisely position and lock parts together in an assembly. First I'll select the base tube's body and the face of the extrude cut on the burn tube. This automatically applies a coaxial constraint, meaning the pipe is now locked to the same diameter. However, at this point the pipe can still move forwards and backwards and rotate around it. So we need additional constraints. To align the burn tube with the ash grates inside, I'll right click on the burn tube and show reference geometry. I'll use the XY plane on both parts and apply a coincident constraint, ensuring they align correctly with the length of the base tube. The part can still rotate, so now I'll constrain the Y axis to lock its orientation. The Y axis constraint alone would have been enough to fully constrain the part, but I'm demonstrating how to use as many of the constraints as I can. Now let's check the top view. We can see that the inside diameter of the burn tube lines up perfectly with the base tube. To finalize the step, I'll anchor the burn tube so it won't shift when we add the next part. Now we insert the feed pipe. Because the pipe needs to be positioned at a tricky 45 degree angle, I'll start by using the component placement tool to rotate it close to the correct angle. Since aligning this part without reference geometry will be difficult, I'll enable reference geometry straight away. First I'll use the constraint tool and I'll select the X axis of the feed pipe. Then I'll select the axis of the burn tube feature we added earlier. This locks the feed pipe to a pivot along the correct axis, but it can still slide along the axis, so we need another constraint. To stop it from sliding, I'll use the YZ plane and apply a coincident constraint. To prevent the vertical movement, I'll use plane 3 from my earlier setup and plane 5 from the extrude cut. I'll set the angle to 90 degrees. With everything aligned, the burn tube is correctly positioned. The feed pipe is fully constrained and the assembly is complete. Now I'll save the assembly in the same folder as the parts to keep everything organized. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful. 